Uh, and I thought that maybe before we start the debate, let's look at the families. In fact, we have three families here that are actually important. First, we have the softs. And you will see of the first picture, I hope for those that are in the back of the room can still see them, and especially those that are hidden behind the cameras in the column. Coffee, cocoa, sugar, wheat, rapeseed, and corn are soft. So this is the agricultural family. We have the energy family, where you have electricity, oil, natural gas, and coal. And then last but not least, we have the metal family, which has aluminium, copper, lead, nickel, tin, and so on. And all of these products today are traded on exchanges. Now, uh, the amount of money going in the commodity markets is just, um, I would say, enormous, humongous. It's uh, over uh, 400 billions of US dollars, which is more than 20 to 30 times uh, the physical production of, uh, of commodity. And what do you see? You find uh, this uh, correlation between the oil market and the S&P 500. And the lower the frequency uh, you go, so if you move from uh, one second to 10 seconds to five minutes to one hour to one day, higher is the correlation. With a little exception at the beginning of 2011, which coincides with the Libyan uprising. But the most striking is that you find it also on other commodities. And these include uh, live cattle. I repeat, live cattle. <laughs> At the beginning, this was mostly an American phenomenon. But uh, we see that in the course of 2010, this becomes also a European phenomenon. This correlation between the stock exchange and commodities was uh, appeared only during US trading hours. But since 2010, it appears also during European uh, trading hours. As a result of these mechanisms, where there is no fixed price transaction for crude oil cargoes, contrary to the economic theory, in oil, there is no such thing as futures contracts or OTC derivatives contracts, trading forward prices, deriving their prices from spot prices negotiated for physical oil available for prompt delivery. As you do not have spot prices negotiated, you cannot derive <coughs> forward prices from the spot market. It's to the contrary, the reverse which does occur. Prices for physical oil derive from the forward prices heavily traded in the financial sphere of the oil market. Commodities are different. They're not capital assets. And in fact, one of the issues I think with investors today is, is that just because you can pull up commodities on a Bloomberg just like you can uh, equities or debt instruments, it doesn't mean they're the same. In fact, the only value in commodities ultimately is in consumption. They do not provide any cash flow like capital assets. Capital assets have the attribute of providing cash flow, interest payments, uh, cash flow from companies, interest payments as, as it relates to debt for real estate, rents. But in the case of commodities, the only value is to buy them and resell them at, the, at, a, at a higher price. One cannot uh, do anything with them from a cash flow basis other than just consume them. And so it's an odd thing that we've we have gotten people to invest in commodities, not as a, as a speculation, as buying and selling, but actually to own commodities for very long periods of time, uh, effectively synthetically hoarding commodities via the futures markets, and owning these commodities uh, for some kind of portfolio diversification, because after all, they're not actually capital assets. So from the Commission side, we understand that both spot and derivative markets they, they are moved by fundamentals. Market fundamentals are key, but we see that it's not only the market fundamentals that drive these markets. The financialization, financialization of the commodity markets has made uh, these markets to grow in volume, to grow in terms of participants, and then the fluctuations and volatility of the prices have appeared in a more evident and more frequent way. 
The Commission has been very actively engaged in this debate in many different fora for many years and has set clearly as a key priority the improvement of the functioning of derivatives markets. That's why the review of MIFID and MAD include a number of concrete measures to enhance the transparency, transparency integrity and oversight in commodity derivatives markets. For example, introducing position reporting by types of traders based on the useful ex experience of the CFTC in, in this respect, the introduction of position limits in order to preserve market integrity, mandating trading of standardized OTC derivatives, as is the case with other kinds of derivatives in uh, on transparent and multilateral trading venues. And finally, these measures are complemented by the review of the market abuse directive in order to abuse that derivatives can be used to mani manipulate the price of the related spot markets or vice versa, using uh, transactions in spot markets to manipulate the functioning of derivatives.